Hi and welcome back to Alistair Davis Golf. Today's video is all about driving distance and getting back to basics and understanding the key things that are going to make you drive the ball further and make sure you don't steer the golf ball on the golf course. Massive thanks to Almond Dwyer Golf Resort for letting me film the videos here today as well also. Great resort in Portugal so if you get a chance check it out. So the driver, we're looking obviously to hit this as far as we can. I've been here doing a golf school this week, for example, and a lot of the driving I've seen, for example, is very what I call steery. People are more concerned in finding the fairway than they are hitting it a long way. And that lack of commitment causes them to be really inconsistent with the hand action through the ball, in my opinion. I would much rather people, when they go to hit the driver, be quite aggressive with it and almost think, okay, if I was in the long drive comp here, how hard could I hit it? I'm ready to just to rein that back in a fraction. I want you to hit it almost as hard as you possibly can whilst being able to maintain a finished position. So I see a lot of people I would believe that are too kind of steery so the hand and arm timing becomes much harder and they start to spray the ball. So I really want to see you try and hit the ball a long way off the tee and naturally just try and feel that we move through the ball with a bit of aggression. Okay, so a couple of things I'm going to talk about about back to basics for the driver is more about how we stand the golf ball and then a simple little drill we can do to improve our angle of attack. Again, the common things I see done incorrectly by amateur golfers would be that when they hit the golf ball, they generally hit down and across the golf ball too much. Now, hitting down on the ball, for example, at 90 mile an hour speed, if you hit down on the ball three, let's say three degrees versus three degrees up on the ball will cost you between 10 and 15 percent of your distance. So it's quite a huge sacrifice to make just by hitting down on the ball. So we definitely want to encourage you to hit up on the ball. And the best drivers in the world would hit up on the golf ball and generally have a tiny bit of shaft lean also. Now, this shaft lean would help reduce the spin loft on the club. Now, spin loft's quite a sexy term, if you like, and a complicated term. But what we're doing really is the dynamic loft versus this versus the angle of attack differential is being reduced so basically you're launching the ball as strong as you possibly can in simple terms so hitting up on the ball while kind of de-lofting the club and having that shaft lean is the strongest way to hit it now the dangers with shaft lean with any club is that you lose connection so if i lean this shaft and my arms come away from my body this ball is pretty much only going one way down the right hand side maybe even right going right which is pretty destructive. So when we have shaft lean, we have to make sure we maintain connection. And this is just kind of a, you know, terms and conditions in the bottom, if you like. So if you do create shaft lean, make sure you maintain that connection between your lead arm and your torso. Otherwise you might end up in problems. You might strike the ball better initially, but the directional control will be a little bit tough to control. So back to basics. So what I want to see really with the driver is the ball position correctly positioned, kind of left heel, left instep way. Again, a lot of people on the golf course tend to get in the habit of moving the ball around too much accidentally. So a good habit to have is to set up the golf ball with both feet together and the ball opposite the center of your feet. Move the right foot away, the shoulder width apart, and just move the left foot literally about a quarter of an inch at max. Now from there, a good habit I like to see people have is have the golf club in the center of the stance to try and get the sternum there, to try and get the sternum and the body set behind the golf ball. Again, nothing new here if you've seen my videos before. This is what I like people to do. So from there then, I want to feel that we get the ball position forward and the hands, if anything, level with the ball or even slightly behind the ball to encourage that hitting up facet in the golf swing. Now, what I want to feel in the golf swing, which is probably the, the sexier part people want to hear a bit more, is when we're swinging back, I really want to feel, for back to basics for distance, we make a big turn and we get the turn behind the golf ball. So we try and feel our sternum works in towards our right thigh and we feel our arms are really wide. So the wideness and the turn, in turn, give us two things to help length. Shifting our weight by moving our sternum correctly helps create power. Also creating a nice wide arm swing creates a wider arc to create more natural power too. So I want to see those two things happen. Again, a lot of driver swings I see from amateurs would get kind of very narrow, very steep, and then they come down across the golf ball. So I really want to see those two things maximize. 
Obviously it helps if we have the right equipment also. Again, my golf clubs are all fitted for me correctly. I have the shafts fitted. I have the right loft on the club so I achieve the optimum launch and spin conditions. You might say, well, what are the optimum spin and launch conditions? For someone like myself, with my speed, I'm about 105, 106 mile an hour. I'm getting slower as I get older. But I'd want to launch this about 13 degrees and spin it about 2,200. So if my swing speed was slower, I might want it launching a wee bit higher and a tiny bit more spin. But that kind of bracket, about 14 degrees and two and a half thousand, or slightly under that, is a good window to look at for most golfers. The top guys on tour now will probably be looking around 13, 14 degrees launch and maybe 2,000 top end spin because they can carry it you know, with more speed a little bit further and the ball can run out a little bit more. They can afford to lower that spin a little bit. So, important you do get fitted anyway. So, as we were saying, standing behind the ball, wide arm swing. And the last thing I want to do to encourage that hitting up is use this as a drill, put the head cover just in front of the ball. And you'll see here I've got this about one club head width in front of the golf ball. So I should be able to pick this ball off the tee peg, miss that head cover. And if I hit that head cover, I know I'm not getting that club to ascend enough to achieve that angle of attack I want. Once we feel we're achieving that consistently, then maybe I might start to feel, okay, can we then encourage that de-lofting facet, that spin loft facet we talked about to create that even greater distance again? Let's have a go at a shot. So again, achieve my correct ball position. Come here. Feel now from there, I'm gonna get my sternum behind the ball. Nice wide arm swing if I can, over that cover. Pretty good. Misstruck it ever so slightly, but really straight ball flight. Must be these new drivers, it goes straighter. But again, I achieved the goal of missing this head cover. I tried to feel I wound behind the golf ball and got that width. Again, I could do with more width in my golf swing, so don't worry about that too much. It's more feel I'd want you to have, and certainly for a practicing point of view, make kind of big swings, feel your wrists are away from you, your hands are away from you, feel there's a little bit more or less wrist cock, more ulna, and then from there, feel that we hit up on the golf ball. Once you've got the feeling of that angle of attack being achieved, as I said, you might then work towards some de-lofting drills. So for me, a lot of half swings, you see how my wrists, I'm trying to create that shaft lean and de-lofting feel. And even if you wanted to do, you could put a T on the face of the, the club with some blue tack and try and get that T peg pointing down as much as you can when you're hitting these little shots. So that would kind of look like this. And again, you won't achieve a huge amount of distance there. So I'm really trying to hit that small swing and hit up on the golf ball and really de-loft it. So it almost feel like you're trying to hit a top spin shot in tennis, almost. Okay, it's almost that kind of extremeness of rolling that tire down a road feel. So it is extreme, but try a few small shots like it and then naturally let that come into your golf swing. So let's try one more, and again, I'm going to try and put the spin loft feel in, so rehearse it with the hitting up feel with a full swing. Definitely got the feel there, again, didn't quite strike it 100% as I wanted to, it was a fraction out the toe of the club, just by the noise and the feel, but it was a very low flight, much lower than I would do naturally. And again, I'd want to take that then into more natural swings. That's a bit too extreme, right? And we're really trying to work extremes for then you to be able to take it into your normal swing. So, have a go at these drills, have a go at this setup to get back to basics with your distance for the driver off the tee. Again, don't steer it, hit it hard, but make sure you're not losing balance. If you're losing balance, you've probably gone a tad too far with that. So we're looking really for commitment and trying to feel, okay, I'm gonna smash this down the fairway rather than let's nurse it down the fairway and steer it. Okay, just try it and see how you get on. Hope you've enjoyed this video on driver distance and hopefully it'll make you hit the ball further, but also straighter as well. If you have, please click like down below. Really helps my channel grow. I really appreciate if you can do that. Also chat, tell me what videos you wanna hear from me in the future. Tell me what subjects you want me to cover. I'll come back to you as soon as I can with a video that's appropriate for you or any questions you have also, chat down below. 
One last thing, if you haven't subscribed already, please do, do so. Please join me in my channel and you get all the notifications of my videos in for free and I post videos three times a week. So you'll get all those videos on a variety of subjects. So last thing, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again here soon. Massive thanks to Amandwire Golf Resort.